Hi, Lucas here from Andy's Man Club, the home of the It's OK to Talk campaign. We're at the HD Performance Centre in Doncaster today, home of Mark DeCasey. We've grafted, we're talking to Joe Craven and Rico Franco about this, basically, the It's OK to Talk campaign. What we're doing, we're encouraging guys to pick up these cards and ask each other questions that men usually won't ask each other, whether it's about well-being, whether it's a bit of fun, it remains to be seen. Which card will you take? It's OK to Talk. Right, we're ready. Right, so we'll start with, <coughs> have you ever had a nickname and what was it and why? Yeah, um, I had a nickname, obviously oh, it's still the same nickname, it's called Bonbon. <laughs> Basically I used to eat a lot of Bonbon sweets, so that's, there's not a mad story to it, I just used to eat a lot of bonbons. Next minute, one of my coaches just called me and then I just stuck with my fight name, Bonbon, bon, so it's not really intimidating. <laughs> this is a bit more mindset related, this one, so uh, can you think of like a failure that you've been through and how that set you up to be successful again after you've been through it? A failure, obviously, I was, I've had quite a few losses in fights, um, but you know, I don't believe it's a failure because you're just learning them losses. There's a saying, isn't there, you win or you learn, um, and I think, you know, it's, what do you think? What do you think of that sort of perfect record? That need to have a perfect record in fighting. Everyone's got a loss in them. Like someone's always better than you, so you always end up facing someone who's going to beat you one day. It's just part of the game, and you just you grow and learn from it. That's how you get better. You've got your last pound in your pocket. Um, what are you buying with it, and why? A bonbon. <laughs> <laughs> um, last pound of a pocket, probably a dog treat. I've got two rescue lurchers. Right. Yeah, and they're like my kids, so yeah, that yeah, I'd be I'd be lost without them. What was it that uh, that actually first motivated you to start fighting? Um, I think I had a lot of aggression and like a um, bit of an anger issue. And I, I had a lot of frustration. I felt like I had a focus, but I just needed to find my passion. And I, I, did, I played a lot of sports when I was a kid, and I felt like there was this. When looking back now, there was a lot in me that I just needed to let out. And I believe once I found that passion, when I, when I started in a boxing gym, I just felt it just clicked straight away. And I was like, this is, this is good, like, even just hitting the bags. And then it just progressed from them. And it went to like one day a week, three days a week to every day. And uh, after that, it was just, yeah, I think, I think as soon as I found that passion, that was it. I had that focus was there, the drive was there, and it just made me push on just to carry on for a good 15 years. We're here with Grafted today. Um, obviously, their, their entire uh, sort of thing is around creating a team of grafters. Um, what do you think makes a grafter? Definitely hard work, discipline, sacrifices, and you know, just turn up every day and putting in that work. And you know, you've got to be a grafter to be an athlete in any sport or any job to be fair, you know what I mean? You, you're gonna be you're gonna be grafting, so yeah, fair play to all the grafters out there. Uh, a time when you faced your fear, um, what was it that you were afraid of and how did you face up to it? I had uh, ulcerative colitis for about nine years and it got severely bad where I needed major surgeries to rip, rip out my bowels and get a ileostomy bag fitted and I was in the peak of my career winning a world title and and uh, obviously the surgeon said turn around you know you're not going to be fighting again or like you everything's done I thought I thought my life was over and in my head I was just feeling I was fearing when I got when I got older on I'm going to be really bad depressed and I was at the time but then obviously turned it around and made things happen but that was biggest time I feared a lot of fear that was yeah when I had the surgery what, what was that journey like? Like, how, how did you sort of get through those dark days? How did you build up that resilience? Yeah, so obviously when, when you get hit with that question and, you know, saying you need to have your bowels out or you probably die and thinking I can't compete again, it was, you know, I was in a dark place and I think that the thing that got, got me through was um, I just, uh, just thinking about my mum when she passed away nine years ago, that, that kind of motivated and fueled me. So I, I kind of used that for fuel. because I, I was thinking, I need to make her proud. She's going to be there with me. So that was basically one of the main things that motivated me to get through and through them dark times where I am now. And if it weren't for that, I'd, 
you know, I'd probably just sit down and just call it a day. I could feel her there with me all the time.